I thought today we would do something on Norton, Norton Gallery. It's my favourite, really. And uh, of course, you know, Norton just been bought over by an Indian company, TVS. So um, that's uh, John Player Norton when they raced. Peter Williams designed that when Nortons were very, very strong. 1973, really good bike, lots of victories. So we wander through to the Norton Gallery. kicked off really in 1907. Um, this bike here, um, V-twin Peugeot engine, the great REM fire won the twin cylinder class in the first TT 1907. And they used Peugeot engines but um, you should have PF on here but Norton's ground it off so that uh, people wouldn't know they were using foreign engines. They also used Minerva engines, which were made in Switzerland. Uh, number 22, uh, that's how it came from, we bought it in Argentina many, many years ago. That's before the restoration. Um, V-twin, single speed, belt drive. Uh, that's a nice touch there. Do you see the way the Norton's embossed on the side of the tank? A bit of a feature. This is the man himself. The great James Lansdowne Norton. This picture always hung in the reception area at Bristbridge Street, the original factory in Birmingham. And you see, unfortunately, died at 56. So we did an awful lot in a short period, short life we had. As I said, the Norton factory has just been bought by an Indian company. So they, they say they're going to take up production at Donington. So time will tell. But it's not the first time Norton's have been bought out um, or changed ownership. AMC in 1966, AMC took them over when again they went into financial trouble. And then in 1972, BSA Triumph and Norton's got together. Maybe we should have a look at the bike upstairs that uh, the three manufacturers made together. We'll have a look in the other hall to see that. There you go. This is the P92. You can see it's not on the side, but it's really got a, a BSA engine. It's got Triumph forks, Triumph wheels, Norton tank. Bob Trigg designed a frame, rubber mounted engine to cut down the vibrations, and um, very popular. Could have been a very successful bike. Uh, it was just before the XL Honda and the XT Yamaha, which were again 500 singles. And I feel that if they'd have gone into production, they could have uh, led the world and probably not gone into liquidation. How we come so many prototype Nortons as we walk around? The great Bob Collier, friend of mine when I worked at Aerials. Bob was a real genius, a real engineer, and a real many futuristic ideas. And what I liked, I'm like, Bob, he got them done. He didn't think about them. The world's full of great thinkers and very few doers. Bob was a doer, a bit like myself. So he put, this is the first Norton twin ever. Just 1941, 42. So you've got two cylinders. You've got one cam. So you run this one cylinder off the top of the cam. And then you go through 180 degrees and you run the other cylinder off the bottom of the cam. So you've got the one piston operating on the valve timing on the top of the cam at 180 degrees at the bottom. You've got the other cylinder working. So one camshaft drives both cylinders. Very ingenious. We move on again, another Norton 36 mics. Um, this is what we were looking at the other day when we were saying about the feather bed. And this is your garden gate. So. You can tell what the handling, even in the names, were a garden gate and a feather bed. So that's how you compare the handling. So um, this is a canvas Artie Bell feather bed frame. This is the garden gate, real camel of a thing. And um, so that transformed the Norton 
In 56, when I was going quite well on the NSU, the great Joe Craig, another Ulsterman from Ballymena, was the Norton team manager. So Joe Craig asked Miller, would he like to be on the works Norton team? At the time, there were very bad bikes. That in 56, 57, they were way down in par. You couldn't live with guzzies or DKWs or MVs or anything like that. So Miller must have been the only man in the world ever to turn down a works Norton ride. I didn't take the Norton up because it wasn't quick enough, but I carried on with the NSU and then Mondial and CZ uh, and did successful. But it would have been interesting to ride Nortons, but at the time, they weren't very competitive. 500 team Norton, this was the trial bike. Again, Norton prototypes were all made really in Belfast with my Candace brothers and Artie Bell. And uh, they give all the ideas to the Norton factory in Birmingham. Actually, as a small boy, 14 or something, I went to see the McCrum Cup and Artie Bell, they had just made this, and Artie Bell, my absolute hero, was riding in the McCrum Cup trial, and lo and behold, he crashed off it, and I couldn't believe it. Still can't believe it this day that he fell off, my hero fell off on a 500T Norton, but le later when I was old enough to ride one, absolute kennel, terrible thing. And the good best thing about those was having the opposition on them. Norton for all was experimenting. Luckily, Bob Collier rescued all this stuff when the Norton factory closed down, we came to a deal, we worked together, and um, okay, they weren't in this state or anything like it, but the bones were there, so Miller was able to rescue them from literary scrap. Right, have a look at this here. This is McCandles again at Audi Bell. Beautiful bit of gear. You can see how advanced it is. Audi Bell and the canvas has made this. They took it over to Bracebridge Street to show Morton's. And um, Gilbert Smith, the top man at Norton's, he was making these things. Your, your old garden gate frame, antiquated bit of tack gear, heavy old thing. And he said, we've got a big problem. He said, the problem is we've just ordered all the frame lugs a two year supply, so we've got to use all the frame lugs up on this rather than switch to the modern model. So, totally brainless because even if he had melted all the bloody old castings down that he'd made, he wouldn't have lost much money on them. But that was it. They were always trying to get Norton's to go four cylinder. As a little young boy, that we used to visit Woodstock Road, Artie Bell's shop on the way home from school. We used to do about a three mile detour to see if we could get a glimpse of the great Artie Bell, see if we could see any Mike's Nortons. And I remember as a boy sitting on this here quite often because it sat outside the shop. Uh, they used um, 500 four cylinder freight, freight car engine in it. Didn't think much of the gear change because it was like Lambretta. The clutch and the selector was on the um, twist grip. Obviously something to do with the gearbox, but. But if you notice something, if you notice something here, we often try to find this bike, but it disappeared. But if you have a close look, you'll see that that's the bike with a different engine. Took the fake car engine out after Norton's didn't like it. Wonderful bit of achievement. So that's your four cylinder Norton prototype. See why it's called the Norton Kneeler, you kneeled in it. New concept of a racing Norton, and uh, it was very successful. The only thing was that FIM, the governing body, didn't like it, it was too futuristic, so they banned it. It only ran on the Northwest 200, the Great Way M, he had a bit of engine problems, set to that record. Some of the posters that Norton did after it broke 61 world records at Moleri. That was it with a 350 and a 500 class. I thought that post there was fantastic. Castrol streamlining. That's a photograph at Mallory Park. And people ask me how it handles well. 
if you put your hand on the bottom of the microphone, you can see when Miller grounded away, going around the hurt on at uh, Mallory Park. The best way is flat out because once you start backing off, you start getting the head, the head staggers and so forth. This is the album we have on it um, that I've gathered up information over the years. That's the great Ray M and the TT. He did practice on the TT with it, but uh, Ray M Northwest 200 postage stamps and the yellow man on it. Uh, yours truly checking out. He's lost something. For the record, the shirt, two, two riders shared the bike. Eric Oliver, Ray Am, Rhodesian. Eric Oliver was a sidecar man. But 7R record, 120 mile an hour average for 7Rs. Phenomenal. And a 1R average of 133 miles an hour. And the fastest lap they did was 147 mile an hour. 147 miles an hour round more area. So I feel that was one of the best, uh, most exciting Nortons. And it's exciting to ride too and handles exceptionally well. Well, when we were getting ready at Go Around the Old Workshop, when we were trying to start it, little did we know we were far and far too much fuel up to it. So it all gathered up on the belly pan under here. You can see the blisters there too. So when it fired up, the bloody thing took fire and Miller was on the, Miller got off it and sort of held it while the flames were coming up through here. It was really on its way. I, I was holding it with the flames, but I couldn't really have the heart to drop it because I knew if it dropped it, it would really go up. And uh, I remember no hairs left from my arm. Bob just arrived the nick of time and just managed to get on top of the job. So, very lucky that we didn't lose the lot. Short and Holland Aircraft Factory uh, was a world leader in Belfast Lee uh, with aircraft design, vertical take aircraft. So they made all this fairing up. These are the Panier tanks. Aircraft work, I'm sure it gave the workers uh, a lot of uh, satisfaction to see it going out to break 60 world records. So wonderful bit of tack, wonderful bike. And uh, when you're inside that, really great. You've got the F naught and the leader, and this is the low boy. You can see how they try to get the frontal area down so that um, less resistance to the wind. So quicker, quicker, quicker. If you notice, there's no top yoke on the, on the handlebars, on, on the forks. The handlebars are down below. That Guzzies use that principle too, where they only use the bottom yoke, no top yoke, to get the, the height of the thing down. So then they dispensed the fuel tank from here to the back of the engine. And then they put the oil tank behind the gearbox. You can probably see it better on this side. So now you've got the oil tank in here, the fuel tank there. All down low, another foot of Hillbury in the TT. Um, you can see how low it is. So that's the low boy, 350, double overhead cam. I've used it quite a bit. Uh, Goodwood, um, Mallory, and performs quite well. Uh, so, those fantastic lineup of the most exceptional Works Norton racers.